Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to QNAP Live broadcast. From today, uh, we have J Jason, our product manager, here with us. Hello, hi, Hello. Daniel. Hello. So we are going to talk about some uh, interesting mm -hmm. feature that Jason brought here today with mm -hmm. us. It's a hardware piece. Yeah. It's a, say a feature piece is an adapter. Mm -hmm. So I'll say it is a six gigabit per second SAS to set up SSD adapters. That they are the for dual controllers and NAS ser uh, and servers, NAS servers, mm -hmm. and for those with SAS interface. As you can see in this slide, on the left-hand side, we have the QDA SA2 and uh, we have the ES1686DC dual controller NAS and uh, below it uh, another server of your choice, Windows Linux dual controller server. And the other part that we're going to introduce up here, if you can see, maybe there is the QDA SA beneath it with another SSD. So we're going to talk about these elements and how mm -hmm. they integrate and what are the solutions that the QDA SA and the QDA SA2 brings with it in this ecosystem. So we have this uh, highlight, this uh, schedule that we're going to talk about today and uh, Jason provided us some uh, topics for, for it and we have to see how cost effective uh, are the SATA SSDs in dual controller servers. So why do we actually need the dual controller server in the first place? We're going to talk about that part in the beginning. And then how we can use SATA SSDs on dual controller servers with QDA SA and QDA SA2. So this will be mainly the core part of why we are trying to focus on today. As well as we have a video demonstration uh, uh, of uh, the performance testing mm -hmm. and reliable performance with the SATA SSD uh, as a topic for today. So before we go on, we have uh, a lot of uh, areas of life that we are actually dependent nowadays and we have to communicate and provide different services. Say uh, we are uh, dependent in all of these, say for example, CCTV cameras for schools, communities, hotels and many other options, even banks and so on. And we have hospital x-rays, scanning and medical, medical record systems, critical data and uh, daily operations and say also financial services and these are all dependent on what kind of uh, services we use what kind of uh, infrastructure and architecture we build around and uh, what if there is something uh, what if something goes wrong in these areas of life then we don't want that to happen because if it happens not that it might cause uh, uh, monetary losses mm -hmm. so it will cause uh, financial damage to uh, both parties the company the service provider and their clients or customers but it might also endanger the lives of those customers and the people around it that they are uh, part of this architecture and the social security of the general public and the whole population of it so we we provide a solution to actually prevent this kind of events in the future right yes so we have this and uh, we have this idea described here. Maybe Jason, you can tell us yeah. more about it. So you will see here in this slide is that uh, there are two common high availability storage architectures. Uh, one is uh, active standby and the other one is uh, active active. Mm -hmm. And our enterprise DFS NAS belongs to the active active category. Okay, because it's one single device that has dual controllers. So mm -hmm. it can uh, prevent uh, disasters when something happens. And then what can happen? You know, uh, take the active standby architecture as an example. There are some uh, disadvantages to its approach. First of all is uh, the cost issue. Uh, as you can see there, with active standby, you need to buy two systems, two individual systems with uh, twice the number of hard drives, right? And then so you have the, the hard drive cost and then also the system cost uh, uh, doubled. Mm. Yep. And secondly is, uh, uh, as you can see there, with active and standby, the active unit is uh, responsible for providing the uh, data services to the clients. So uh, all the loading will be uh, put on an active server, okay. whereas the standby server uh, just idle. Okay, mm -hmm. So that means uh, there's an unbalanced uh, uh, load in the active server. Okay. Okay. So you cannot uh, maximize your investment. Third one is uh, when there's a power outage, then usually uh, it can cause data loss with those uh, servers that do not have a 
integrated uh, power supply unit, mm -hmm. or if they don't connect to additional uh, UPS, right? And the uh, fourth one is uh, if something wrong with a, a network condition, then you may lose the data because uh, or the the standby unit standby NAS may not be active because uh, the active standby uses a network to uh, chain them together so to send the heart rate signal to uh, make sure when the active uh, server is down then uh, the standby server will be up and then take over the active role okay and also with a network issue you have to worry about the uh, okay um, the IT administrator has to think about the, the bandwidth you know, right. like uh, for the data, you have to think about uh, in your network, do you need a uh, one gigabit to connect between the two servers or the 10 gigabit or 25 gigabit or even a fiber channel to link the active and standby servers together in order to provide, uh, to synchronize the data between the two. Okay, so yeah. that's another cost. Whereas uh, if you look at, uh, uh, consider the QNAP uh, ES NAS, then with the active, active active design you know it can resolve all the issues mentioned with the active standby mode okay, okay? so there are a lot more benefits with the active active uh, uh, operation mm -hmm. okay and let's take a look at the uh, dual controller versus the single controller design in terms of the storage data access uh, on the left with the SAS drive because with the SAS protocol it is designed uh, for dual port okay so which means uh, both controllers, controller one and two, can concurrently read and write data to the SAS drive oh, and then keep the data synced. So the SAS drives, whether it's a hard drive or SSDs, they are designed for the uh, dual controller setup. Okay. SATA drive with the protocol, so it's only for a single channel, so only one controller can be supported, which means uh, if you put a SATA drive in the uh, dual controller device, then it won't be uh, working, won't be okay. recognized. Okay, so that's uh, the disadvantage with the SATA design. Okay, now you may wonder, uh, so what kind of uh, uh, SAS drive I can put into the dual controller, mm. right? Yeah, uh, we, we discussed about this one, right? Mm -hmm. And we have uh, different uh, solutions for mm -hmm. this one and we have uh, SSDs and uh, hard, uh, hard disk drives and uh, also we have those one that are already in the market the SAS SSDs and the S SAS uh, hard disk drives mm -hmm. that will come uh, from say uh, like uh, providers like Seagate, Seagate WD, yeah, GST and mm -hmm. those ones but we also have another one that is kind of a higher price and comes bundled. Uh, the yeah. bundled ones that come mm -hmm. actually with the provider of the high service high-end server, yeah. uh, high servers mm -hmm. and, and, and the SSD in it comes as a component uh, integrated part of it mm -hmm. and you cannot uh, actually do much of it so these are the different solutions that they are for the support for dual controller servers and you can uh, have uh, also uh, uh, for all the clients they have the opportunity to choose those by themselves by based on the providers that we mentioned just earlier yeah and uh, yeah we have uh, the scene that the hard disk and SSD are becoming very popular mm -hmm. especially the SSD is becoming very popular and increasing in uh, its capacity as we see from the timeline that we have here in between say is five years we see that it has had a massive growth and uh, the latest we see is a 180 28 terabytes in compare especially with the hard disk drives mm -hmm. that it has a huge advantage uh, over time right now and it is uh, the RAID 6 has gradually been failing to meet all the reliabi reliability mm -hmm. needs in this uh, regard yeah so SSD is no longer uh, small right and expensive yeah. yeah it's getting bigger capacity and uh, more affordable more affordable yeah mm -hmm. definitely day by day yeah. and as we see uh, we also have uh, you mentioned earlier that the mm -hmm. SATA and uh, cannot uh, provide the two channels mm -hmm. uh, that can be done only by SAS uh, mm -hmm. SSD drives and uh, if you see the difference in price is quite actually huge it's yeah. quite quite big and uh, say 
Also, the uh, enterprise-grade SATA SSDs are designed for centers and cloud servers, so it can also be cost-saving compared to SAS. And uh, for storage, it can provide up to 3.8 terabytes uh, storage capacity, and it has enhanced enterprise reliability as we see 564 megabytes uh, uh, per second sequ uh, sequential read mm -hmm. and 536 megabytes per second sequential write performance. But I, I want to stress out in this uh, part, in this slide here, despite the fact that we have uh, the changes in price, we can actually make use of the SATA SSD once we combine it with a uh, QDA SA uh, solution that you brought here today. Yeah. And actually, mm -hmm. it will be much cheaper still to have the dual controller server make use of the of your SSD with this if you buy the QNAP QDA SA and the SATA that say one of these that is $269 if you combine them it's still one third of the price that what we see there on the left with the SAS SSD solution so mm -hmm. I think it's a very good way to integrate it make mm -hmm. use of it and get get the cheapest price and get the serve its purpose, what, mm -hmm. what it is supposed to do. Yes, so uh, in order to let the users to be able to use the SATA SSD in the dual controller server setup, mm -hmm. so QNAP is now launching the QDA SA and the QDA SA2 for the various uh, dual controller devices. Mm -hmm. So on the left, there's a QNAP Enterprise uh, dual controller NAS with uh, the latest um, ES1686 DC on the top. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, other generation, the ES1640 DC and the V2 version. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then also if you have a dual controller Windows or Linux servers, then you can also um, uh, set up with install a QDA SA SA2 on it. And mm -hmm. then to use sa affordable SATA SSD with that. So let's take a look at uh, the difference between the SA and the SA2. Okay. So the SA, QDA SA is designed for the QNET Enterprise NAS uh, drive trace. So basically, if uh, you have a, if you own a QNAP uh, Enterprise NAS, then you can simply just uh, purchase this uh, QDA SA for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you are using a Windows or Linux uh, server that uh, has a 3.5 inch drive trace, then consider the QDA SA2 on the right because uh, we make as a 3.5 inch mm -hmm. drive form factor, so it can be fit into your 3.5 inch drive tray. Of course, you can also use that uh, with uh, our enterprise NAS, no problem. Okay, okay. Uh, we are sending this uh, four in a bundle. So when you buy, uh, press this order QDA dash SA dash four page, you get actually four in this package. Okay. Uh, same for the QDA SA two, so four in the in the package. And so when you buy, you buy four. They come four pieces of it. Yes. With yeah, because uh, almost all the storage arrays and the NAS servers they are mm -hmm. either a bay and about for the enterprise okay. grade and that's why we think uh, uh, it's better to provide uh, the bundle with, uh, mm -hmm. with some more savings for the customers. Yes, it's very convenient. Also, I see the note there that the NAS must run on QS 2.0 or a later version of it to actually... To support it, yes. So just make it. sure your QS is always up to date and then okay. to, because we add more features and we'll talk more later about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So by adding a QDA SA or SA2 to the dual controller server, as you can see there, with the dual controller SAS server, uh, without a QDA SA, it can only access the SAS drives. But uh, when you put in a QDA SA, uh, it can actually translate the protocol from SAS to SATA with a dual pass capability. So from there on, you can install uh, the SATA SSD uh, as a storage for your dual controller server. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the, uh, each one, okay? So the mm -hmm. first one is the QDA SA, it's uh, like an interposer for you to be installed onto our existing uh, ES NAS tray. Okay. So uh, it is uh, composed of uh, a Marvel 9110 uh, 600 MHz uh, processor. So it handles the protocol translation, okay? And then uh, one end is a SAS 6 gigabit interface connector and the other end is SATA 6 gigabit. And as you, uh, you may know that uh, if you are, if you have one of the newer uh, SaaS uh, servers, it may come already with a SaaS 12 gigabit per second interface. Mm. But uh, okay. since it's a back backward compatible, you can still install our QDA SA and SA2 onto your SaaS 12 gig uh, servers. It can be recognized as okay. without problem. Okay. And then on the right picture, just uh, it's a picture from the uh, Mame website tell, tells the customers. Uh, 
what it does in the protocol translation to uh, get the SAS input the information and then uh, transfer a signal into a SATA. Okay. Right? So how can you install this uh, interposer into the drive tray? It's very simple. So you have this uh, ES NAS tray. There's an order number there, mm -hmm. okay, if you need one more. And then you install that onto both end in the back and then you use a screw to uh, attach them attach this uh, interposer okay. okay and then you can install a drive it can be either 3.5 inch SATA drive or 2.5 inch uh, SATA drive it can mm -hmm. be hard drive or SSD okay just install that so it allows you to use the SATA from now on okay, so very yeah. easy to be installed yeah that I was going to say it looks very easy if you just have to remove these screws and insert the, SAS, uh, the QDA SA2 there yes and then uh, let's take a look at QDA SA2 so uh, again very simple so basically, uh, we allow you to put a 2.5 inch SATA SSDs or drives into that, and uh, the height we can support the, the maximum height. So basically, all the uh, market available uh, 2.5 inch drives can be installed, no matter regardless of the height. Okay, same architecture. Okay, and how do you install that? the SSD into our QDSA2 so simply again with the four screws then you can secure it into our uh, QDSA2 very simple and uh, straightforward okay and uh, what's the benefit of installing a QDSA and SA2 onto our QES NAS as use this as an example so as again like uh, by using the QDA devices then we allow you to use the available SATA hard drives or SSDs to be uh, put into uh, your NAS to create a storage pool and then set up the volumes and shares and then uh, all your different clients can access our NAS server uh, for the data uh, access okay. yeah mm -hmm. so basically you, you don't need to uh, consider the more expensive uh, SAS drives and then you can use the SATA okay, okay. now there are also, also more benefits with the QDA SA and SA2 uh, because uh, for example if you use SSDs right mm -hmm. SATA SSDs not only it is uh, like we saw earlier one third of the price of the SAS SSD yeah. right and then it can increase your NAS performance with uh, for example small files and ran random uh, IOPS mm -hmm. and also with the SSD cache it can be easily uh, hot swap or removed set up mm -hmm. okay? okay and uh, all the all the tray, all the base can be replaced with a SATA SSD, okay, mm -hmm. not just one or two. And the most important is that uh, with our upcoming QES 2.1.1 up system upgrade, mm -hmm. we will support the Drive Smart Health Monitoring. So okay. you will, just like the picture shown there below, you will always uh, be notified about the uh, SSD or hard drive uh, health information mm, so I believe this is a very useful but I, there are useful information to have for the hard disk or the SSD but mm -hmm. I, are, there, are there other uh, benefits or performance uh, like uh, mm -hmm. for, for this one for the SATA SSD yes uh, of course uh, SAT, SATA is the maximum 6 gigabit right mm -hmm. so it's already stored in a SAS 12 gigabit okay. yeah, but uh, the price is much cheaper and uh, because uh, you have the QDA SA as an intermediate uh, layer to do the translation okay. so of course there will be some uh, performance impact uh, for the real performance it's almost no impact you can still keep your up, uh, optimal SATA performance but uh, for the write uh, I would say maybe about 20-30% uh, uh, penalty mm -hmm. okay. okay but uh, no, it's no issue because uh, when you assemble because our NAS is has a 16 base right yeah so if you install 16 of the SSDs actually it can make up for the price for the performance uh, loss issue okay. yeah so let's take a look at our lab yeah. test data see uh, we have uh, tried uh, the uh, ES1686 plus the QDA SA and the SSD 16 of them oh, okay right. with uh, a rate and then uh, here you will see that uh, uh, red 5 and then we use a 10 gigabit dual port two port of the 10 gigabit with a sequential SMB transfer and the read can still be at uh, 2099 megabyte per second whereas the write uh, is uh, almost 1800 megabyte per second so uh, you know with uh, one third of the price you still, still get uh, adequate uh, performance yeah. Yeah, for yeah. it's already uh, 
fast enough for your daily everyday use. Yeah. yeah. So again, uh, yeah, if you have a if you have no budget issue, definitely consider the SAS 12 gigabit the SSD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if you are you are uh, tight on the budget, definitely take a look at the QDA. Yeah, it's definitely a solution. Yes. Yeah. So how about let's uh, do a live demo yeah. about the performance. So, so here I'm gonna test the same device ES1686 NAS, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm gonna upgrade it to four of the ten G. Okay. And then use iSCSI send okay to test the performance, and then with QDA SA2, and then also sixteen of them, oh. and then in the, this time with the rate sixty. Right, okay. this is a huge rate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, let's check it. Let's go. Okay, sure. Let's switch to the demo. All right, here we are. Okay, so here uh, I have the I'm gonna use the Crystal Disk Mark and then to test the performance, sequential read and write. Let's get it going. So because it's gonna take some time to warm up. So mm -hmm. in the meantime, let's take a look at the NAS user interface. So here I have uh, the QES available, and then let's go to the storage manager here. Okay, and I click on the disk, and then let's take the first disk. So here I have installed 16 QDAs and then plus 16 of the Samsung SSDs. So here you will see the information with the Samsung SATA SSD A60 Pro 512 gigabyte. Uh -huh. And then you will see that the, all the information can be obtained, such as the uh, capacity, temperature information, and the speed, 6, six gigabit here, and then even the SSD life estimation, you know, life remaining 98%, something like that. And then also the smart attributes can also be uh, supported after the QES uh, newer version. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is uh, the QES is a good way to um, to uh, support the QDA and then the SATA SSD because uh, we uh, customize it to give you the maximum use out of the QDA. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, let's take a look uh, at the performance. Okay. So here. Um, I have the map, uh, the NAS as an iSCSI target, and then here as a drive I uh, mm -hmm. map to this uh, Windows computer, and you will see that uh, for the read speed, it's actually uh, 3200 mm -hmm. megabyte per second with this setup, and the write is also 1700 megabyte per second. So this just show you a live demo of the, what you can achieve with the QDA and then uh, also with the SATA SSDs in our ES NAS. Mm. Okay. These are good results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, very good results, very convenient and easy to use. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe it's very fast to also integrate it with the system. Yes. And as we saw with it, the performance was working just fine. So yeah, I, we reached the end of our presentation for today. Mm -hmm. We wanted to show what we, we showed what we wanted to show. But for the end, uh, we want to also show to the camera, maybe because we have the pieces here uh, with ourselves, so yes. the QDA SA mm -hmm. and QDA SA2, so maybe we can show it to the camera. Yes. This is the QDA SA2, mm -hmm. and, and uh, this is how it actually looks like. It's very convenient, it looks very, very good and very, uh, how to say, uh, tight in the hand. So it looks like you won't be having uh, any issues with it by and it's uh, going just like this if yeah. you insert it in the tray and, and no no maximum uh, height no maximum height for limitation. the 2.5 inch drives yeah all right so as you can see we all we already have the the SSD SSD here. There, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we insert it and uh, it's very convenient to do so and hold it in the hand mm -hmm. when this uh, looks at uh, the way that jason des described in the slides mm -hmm. how to actually insert it as you have the screws on the side. Yeah. Also we have the QDA SA only mm -hmm. and this one has all the information on the uh, this side here if you can see it and it's very easy to insert it in a 3.5 inch uh, uh, tray. With our ES, this is designed for our ES NAS for tray the ES only. NAS only. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it, it has here the information that is 6 gigabit per second SAS to SATA adapter. Yeah. And also it comes up with more screws as we have in this yeah. moment. Because bag. we sell it in the four in the piece. Four so in we put uh, enough screws for you to use all the QDAs. Mm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I believe uh, you got to see the QDA yeah. SA2 and SA. 
and uh, provide you a solution for SATA SSDs on dual controller servers. Yeah. The most important is the one third of the price. One right? third, yeah, <laughs> it's one third. It's definitely a huge difference. Yes. And it's a solution. Uh -huh. Right. Thank you, everyone. See you Thank next you. time. Bye. Bye bye.